Okay, welcome to part two of the Frenzy video. So I'm going to go over some of the things I have in this lab. Um, I touched on some of the things in the first part, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to show everything in the lab because a lot of the stuff is uh, uh, used strictly for data recovery, but uh, a lot of the things are used for forensics. So I'm going to go over a few things, uh, specifically the more important things that you probably need in your lab. So let's get to it and see what I use. So majority of work is done here in one of these systems here. So um, uh, this is the thread ripper that I use for uh, ingesting um, things like um, forensic cases through Axiom. Uh, this system here is the one with dual monitor. This this one here is uh, for Celebrite and a bunch of other forensic work. But I mean, majority of forensic work is always done here. Unless you have some hardware issue when we have to go to uh, on that side there where we have more data recovery tools. We have um, the microscope and the rework station. I'll, I'll go over that in a minute, but uh, most of the work is done here. So starting from this end is our Mac. Uh, I use that mostly for video editing and a few other Mac related things. Then we have this uh, machine here. And like I said, these here are the dual monitors for that station. And then we have the thread ripper there. I also use that machine here for um, for other other jobs, but most of the time, forensic work. And you can see there's um, a flash extractor, there's a PCV thousand, there's a VNR. So all the tools are there. And this this computer here, mostly Celebrite, and some other forensic tools. But that's exactly that's that's what it's used for. <coughs> So here we have a serpent of cables, most used ones from Celebrite. Here I have most of my, my, all my dongles that I use for various jobs. Uh, there's MFT dongle, there is uh, uh, Alcomsoft and X-Ways and um, Chimera, or Chimera, whatever you pronounce it, bunch of USB sticks. Uh, I have my SSD drive, portable SSD drives. Um, some other things, some hard drives with some things that uh, I work off. Then we get over here. These are my test phones. So here I have a bunch of different test phones that I use, uh, especially for working on a forensic case. Then if I need to test something, then I have different kind of phones. I got iPhones, I have Android phones. Uh, and then we move over here. And you can see your Celebrite. It's right there. So we uh, we have a Celebrite 4 PC, uh, which is this dongle right here. That's what we use here. And I'm just in the middle of uh, recovering some job. Another great purchase that uh, that's uh, very underrated. It's power controlled um, USB hub. This one right here. So you have buttons for each individual port. Plus you have a data only port. Sorry, power only port. That's pretty useful. So, um, especially if you're working on multiple devices, you don't want them to all popping up and celebrate. If I'm only working on one, um, then I put it through here. If I'm doing something else, I also want it to um, uh, have some control over USB. And over here, we have um, then, then over here in this mess, we have XRY. Um, hub and my Raspberry Pi. I'll do a video on the Raspberry Pi, what, the, what I use it here for. It's actually, this Raspberry Pi has a great function for, uh, for a lab here. Uh, and there I have lots of micro SD cards, SD cards, uh, SIM cards, and things like that. And then we move over here. So this is the, uh, the Threadripper station. You can see it here. So like I said, this, this computer is most used for Flash and uh, Axiom. Uh, right now, I got a case going right here. This is uh, another blob I'm working on right now. Maybe that's going to be a video. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. And we have Gardonix. We use that quite often. It's a great write blocker. So yeah, you will need a write blocker um, when you're doing um, imaging. So I use this write blocker. I also use the P3000. I also have a deep spray imager. We'll get to that in a minute. And also here I have a, I have a 
power station. I use it occasionally for flash if I have problems with flash, but um, I find cold as works better with flash than hot, but it's good to have. But I always got a can of uh, cold spray if I need for flash. Um, so that's gonna be on this side. So pre pretty much, I think the, what, what to take away from this side is P2000, super important. Flash extractor and VNR, I, I, I don't think I, I've used it for many forensic cases. Sometimes you might get something really destroyed, so you might have to recover it that way. Uh, so VNR and flash extractor is great for that, but these, these are mostly used for data recovery. And once again, you see I have my uh, USB um, hub that can, I can control each individual uh, port <clears throat> and my magnet axiom is plugged in. This used to be called IEF. Um, I also had this um, um, toaster, whatever the hell it's called. Uh, I use it for plugging drives in, but um, that's this station right here. Okay, so now we're on the other side of the lab. So you can see here, Deep Spar Imager is just running here. There, we use it a lot for uh, forensic imaging and for data recovery. Uh, we have the forensic add on, uh, we have another machine here. That deals with uh, raid stuff and some other forensic jobs. Um, this is mostly like a side workhorse for ingesting data. <clears throat> then we have our other PC3000, the older UDMA version. Um, most of the time, this is only used for data recovery. It's not used for anything forensic, but it's good to have. And on the on this side, the last computer is our Linux machine. Um, this computer is used to be used a lot for forensic imaging. Uh, I had my own uh, write blocker here, but since then we moved away from this. We use it for other jobs now, uh, but still use it quite often. Uh, so these computers get used a lot. Um, there's only two monitors because I, I just remote into them. I don't need a screen in every system and uh, an older system. They're doing some other work. And then we move over here to our um, to the far side of the, of the lab. This is the bench. Uh, I'll start from this side. So they have the hot air station. Um, very good hardware station, not expensive, really good, uh, really good one. We have a microscope with a camera, mostly for YouTube videos, uh, power supply, and um, this um, uh, JBC Nano. That was a great purchase. Very happy with this. Uh, the only problem with this one is tips are expensive and they burn out very, very quickly. Uh, so the tip I can give you here is don't use 700 degrees. It's best to use much lower temperature and uh, your tips will last a lot longer. Uh, I learned this the hard way. And on this side, we have our laminal flow bench for head swaps. And then um, piece the resistance stones. We have our infrared station here. Uh, this gets used quite often. Not that often on YouTube videos. On YouTube videos, I use a different method to removing chips. But I actually use this thing way more than I show in the YouTube videos. Um, it would be kind of boring if I use the same method every single time in the video, so I switch it back and forth. So that pretty much covers the lab. Probably missed a few things, but uh, that's pretty much all of it that's being used the most at all times. Okay, that pretty much covers the entire lab. Um, I probably missed a few things here and there. I mean, I uh, we just have so much stuff here in this lab that I just can't remember, but I went over like the most important things and... Um, but that's uh, that's pretty much what we use at uh, mostly at Celeb. I mean, Celebrite is number one, um, and then probably um, PC3000 for forensic imaging, and the other PC3000 for forensic imaging. The portable PC3000 is great because I can just take it anywhere. If if we have a client that needs a bunch of hard drives imaged, just take it with me, and I can uh, do it there on site. Um, there's a few things I, I didn't mention, so. Um, on my screen here, I have the uh, Easy J tag that's used quite a bit for to fixing uh, uh, boot issues or imaging uh, through ISP if um, if chip off is not not allowed. So we'll use uh, Easy J tag, uh, Riftbox used quite a bit, and then Medusa Probox. So we do have a bunch of other tools. There's also another one for some old Blackberries that we use. The um, I think I used it on some videos. Um, forgot the name of it, but it's, it's back there. It's uh, I might just end, put a shot here of what it is. Uh, but if you watch this channel, you for sure have seen it because I've used it many, many times. So um, that covers the lab. Um, this lab is set up this way. Your lab or any other lab you see might not necessarily be set up the same way because um, everyone builds a lab to fit their needs. Um, 
but this covers uh, this uh, this part two. Now, part three is going to be uh, mostly about uh, court appearances, uh, writing reports, because you are going to be writing out all the reports uh, when you're in this field. You're going to have to um, um, write everything down. Uh, when it comes to reports, you have to write everything down that you're doing, what are you finding, um, of things like that. So report writing, you know, I have a style. Uh, you might have a different style. Everyone's different. Um, and also, uh, one thing I forgot to mention in the last video, I also utilize virtual machines quite a bit. So if, you, if you're dealing with um, explicit content, uh, you either need a separate machine that's not connected to the internet or you can build yourself an, uh, a virtual machine that's not connected to your network. And anytime we have explicit material, it goes to the virtual machine. The machine is encrypted. Uh, it has two passwords to get into it. Uh, and then once we're done with the material, we destroy the virtual machine. And since it's encrypted, uh, nothing remains on our system. So um, you got to take precautions like this because you, obviously if you're working on that kind of material, you might end up being charged for having this material if you're not careful. Um, so you have to uh, pretty much be careful when it comes to things like this. So yeah, that covers part two. Uh, come back for part three. Might be next week or week after. I'm not sure what I'm going to make for a week after, but uh, it might be next week. Um, so yeah, make sure you like it, subscribe this video, um, to this channel. I appreciate all, all, all each one of you uh, for being here. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.